Hi, this is Shane Smythe from Marketing Cloud Mojo. Today we'll be talking about building a scalable data model inside of Marketing Cloud. I've had quite a few people recently ask me, how do you build a scalable data model inside of Marketing Cloud? While there are probably a thousand different ways to do scalable data models inside of Marketing Cloud, I'm going to kind of talk through a couple of the pros and cons of this topic inside of Marketing Cloud today. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to go into Email Studio. A lot of these times, these questions revolve around synchronized data extensions. People normally ask, you know, I have synchronized data extensions, I set up the connector, I'm pulling in my objects from Salesforce. How do I take that object structure that I have inside of the core Salesforce, core sales cloud, and how do I move that into normal data extensions that I can use for my sending, for my segmentation, for my journeys? Um, and it may not be immediately apparent. Um, there's not a whole lot of material out there on the topic, so I'm gonna kind of walk through what I like to do in order to enable all the functionality across Marketing Cloud. So what I like to do immediately is I like to first look at the information I have here. Um, I, it looks like I have contacts and leads, and it looks like we have a couple of preference center um, subscription objects in here, and, and maybe even a user object as well. Um, so let's just take a very simple example here. Let's just take contacts. It gets a little more complicated when we start looking at contacts and leads and kind of merging them together and marketing them together in a single um, send. So we'll just take contacts for this scenario. Uh, what I like to do is I like to take these contacts in our, our synchronized data extension and move them to an, uh, you know, quote unquote, all contacts table. And this all contacts table is kind of the main source of everything inside of Marketing Cloud. Uh, I do this for a couple of reasons that I'll go into later, more on the data model side inside of Contact Builder. Um, but quickly, I'm going to show you what this looks like inside of a data extension. Um, so if you've seen any of my past videos, you've probably seen this all context concept before. Um, it has subscriber key, it has email, it has first, last name, it has um, city and billing information, and anything else you want in here. Your synchronized data extension folder probably has more than this. So this is your ability as a marketer and as an admin inside of Marketing Cloud to kind of filter down what you want your contacts to see. And you have that ability on this, the synchronization setup. You have the ability to select and non-select uh, certain uh, columns. Um, but maybe you want to pull that into Marketing Cloud and use it in other facets, but maybe you don't want to be able to show that on the segmentation side. So this gives you the ability to do that by creating another data extension called All Contacts and moving the information from one data extension to the other. Uh, we do that through automations. Um, so I'm gonna go into Automation Studio real quick. We're in our activities section inside of Automation Studio. And you can see that I actually already have an all context set up here. Um, so I'm gonna quickly just go through the syntax here. This is a fairly straightforward um, SQL query. Uh, but what this does is it's selecting the specified columns from our synchronized contact Salesforce data extension, and we're targeting the all contacts data extension where we want to put the information. And in this case, I put it as overwrite because every time we run this, whether it's hourly or daily, we want to take all the information from synchronized data extension and we want to move it over to the all contacts so this stays fresh and up to date. One thing I will call out here is this little ENT dot. This is really important when you're working with synchronized data extensions. If you go in here and you try to modify this query and you take off this ENT, what it's gonna say is that this data extension doesn't exist. And you're gonna be wondering, well, I'm looking at it in my other view and I'm in the email student and I see it and that's exactly the field. Um, it's because it is uh, at the parent level. It actually, uh, all the synchronized data extensions live at the parent level and so you have to do the ENT, which is abbreviated for enterprise, in order to access that. So once we have this set up, this will give us the ability to have all of our information live at this all context level. So a couple more pieces of, of uh, nuggets of information about this. One of the other reasons I do this is so that I can filter. So think of this, if we were going to go to the synchronized data extension folder, and we were to create a filter right from this contact Salesforce data extension folder, it would allow you to filter and it would create another data extension and you could send to that. And that's all fine and good. Um, I've seen a lot of cases where people want to be able to filter down more levels. Um, 
So if we were to try to send to this synchronized uh, data extension folder, that's uh, not the best practice. And I'm gonna illustrate that here by going into Contact Builder. So if we go into Contact Builder, we can see all of our attribute groups here. Um, and for this, I'm just gonna create a, a quick little test in here so I can show you what this means. Um, there's very common situations where you're going to wanna to relate your data extension to your attribute group here so that you can use it inside of Journey Builder. Um, when you go to link, however, you notice that there isn't any option to select synchronized data extensions to connect to your model. Uh, this is actually an update uh, recently made, probably within the last six months, um, somewhere in the late 2018s, uh, early of 2019. They used to allow you to do it, or at least the configuration used to allow you to do it, but it actually breaks the model behind the scenes. Uh, so for some reason, your instance still lets you do that, don't do it. Um, but now it does not allow you to do that. So if I wanted to connect my synchronized data extension to this, I won't be able to. So by creating the all contacts data extension and that type of model, it allows you to then add that data extension straight into your attribute group here, linking it as you would a normal attribute group. And then you're able to relate more information about the contacts to this all contacts table. So let's say I wanted to be able to add my store information or maybe my loyalty information. I can easily do that by linking this now. Or maybe I wanted to add my orders. So I could easily do that. And now I have a nice little relational uh, inside of my attribute group. If you didn't create that duplicate all contacts, you wouldn't be able to do that. So one last nugget I wanted to talk about. If we go back into our email app and we looked at our data extension folders, you're gonna see a couple different folders here. We have our synchronized data extension folder, we have our shared folder, we have our normal data extension folder, but we also have Salesforce data extension folders. So this is another frequently asked question. Why is there a Salesforce data extension folder and what does it do? Uh, so if you're working inside of Journey Builder and you're sending an email, uh, the information about the clicks and the opens goes back to Sales Cloud automatically. I, I covered that in one of my previous Journey Builder videos, so you can go in there, there's a little toggle that says send back to Sales Cloud. Uh, inside of Email Studio, however, if you're doing a single send and you send that single send to a normal data extension folder, it will not go back to Sales Cloud. That is what the Salesforce data extension folder is for. If your data extension lives inside of the Salesforce data extension folder and you send to it, Marketing Cloud has a process that knows that it needs to go and try to map the identifier of that data extension, the subscriber key, back inside the Sales Cloud to the contact or lead that you sent to. Uh, so this is probably a quirk inside of the, the transition period we have inside of Marketing Cloud. And, and uh, you know we've talked to a lot of product engineers about this and hopefully this will change in the future. But the current state is that you need a Salesforce data extension folder uh, data extension in your Salesforce data extension folder if you want that information to go back. And that is a pretty frequent request. So normally, what we'll do is when we're setting up a new account or a new Marketing Cloud instance, if we have a very structured data extension relational um, structure, we will duplicate that both in the data extension folder and the Salesforce data extension folder. And it creates a little bit of duplication, but what it does is allows the users to use the data extensions for their journeys and then use the Salesforce data extensions for their single sends. So that's a quick overview of, of how I look at data models inside of, of Marketing Cloud. I'd love anyone else's feedback and opinions on how they've seen it done and what they've seen successful. And if you guys are looking for something a little more in depth, uh, comment on the video and, and we can go a little more in the weeds here. That's all for today. Thanks for watching.